Here's something for you to worry about. It's something that audiophiles wonder and worry about, so it could be important. It's the skin effect, the skin effect in electrical conductors. As you know, sound is picked up by a microphone and travels through a cable, an electrical conductor, to a preamp. From there, it travels through a cable, an electrical conductor, to an audio interface. Then digital, 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 digital. Then it comes out as an analog electrical signal, again from your turntable, CD player, streamer, or whatever source you use, into a cable, an electrical conductor, which takes it to your amplifier. Through another cable, an electrical conductor, if you have a separate preamplifier and power amplifier. And then through cables, electrical conductors, to your loudspeakers. All these cables, all these electrical conductors, all this skin effect. You see, this, among other reasons, is why audiophiles and serious hi-fi lovers will spend a thousand dollars or more on a one meter interconnect and tens of thousands of dollars for their speaker cables. So what is the skin effect? Massively complicated science, that's what it is. But it can be simplified, and I shall try to do that. The skin effect is where higher frequency currents flow closer to the surface of a conductor, rather than through its entire cross-section. So, imagine a DC current, which you can take as having a frequency of zero hertz. There's no skin effect, but in audio signals, frequencies 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, then the current generates a magnetic field that in turn generates eddy currents that act in opposition to the signal. Yes, eddy currents. I might focus in on that topic in a future video. Hacking through the jungle of physics and maths, we find that higher frequencies generate more skin effect and tend to flow closer to the surface of the conductor. I think you can see what happens if not all of the cross-sectional area of the conductor is used, then the resistance will be higher, higher at higher frequencies. This is not what we want. We expect our cables to have a flat frequency response, because why shouldn't they? But they don't. They're more resistive at high frequencies. Now, how much effect this higher resistance will have depends on the load, potential dividers and all that. And of course, the effect becomes greater the more you worry about it. Let's stick to the skin effect itself and explore further. So we find terms like skin depth. This is the depth into the cable where the current density has fallen to 1 over E. E. It's a number, like pi, only it's E. 2.718828, etc. Let's just round 1 over E to a third. We won't actually be doing the maths here, so it doesn't matter. There's also the penetration depth and plenty more science stuff, but let's keep it as simple as possible for now. Let's think of that then. The signal doesn't use the whole cross-sectional area of the cable, just the part that's close to the edge, the skin. The rest of the cable is an electrically barren wasteland. Well, actually a seething mass of eddy currents, but wasteland it may as well be. This seems enough to worry about already, but let's worry some more. The skin effect is more pronounced in thicker cables. So, for instance, I could pick a frequency and say that in a cable of a certain diameter, 75% of the conductor is used. In a thicker cable, 68% is used. I've linked a table in the description so you can see the detail. So, whoever thought that thicker cables would naturally be better, uh, that's all of us, <laughs> well, we'd all be wrong. Thicker cables have a more pronounced skin effect. What can we do? Well, one possibility might be to upgrade our copper cables. Copper, as I'm sure you remember from your school science, is only the second best electrical conductor. The best is silver, of course, coming at a higher price, which is why we mostly don't use it. But silver is more conductive than copper. Guess what? <laughs> the skin effect is greater. Oops. But there's an interesting possibility here. If the higher frequencies are migrating to the outer edge of the cable, thus encountering more resistance, why not coat the copper cable with silver? So, as those higher frequencies migrate to the edge, they find a more conductive material to pass through. I didn't invent this. It's a known thing and commonly practiced. Honestly, it does sound like common sense, and it doesn't have to be all that much more expensive. I said, it doesn't have to be. So this leads to silver-plated cables gaining a reputation for brightness. High frequencies pass through the silver, which has less resistance, therefore they get through at a higher level. You'd think so, 
wouldn't you? Some audio files consider that as well as having a lower resistance, signals travel faster through the silver, accounting in part for the additional brightness. Clearly, high frequencies are going to arrive first and subjectively affect the way the listener perceives the overall content of the signal. I didn't say that. I'm just saying that it is said. If you want to look further into this, then you might look up electron velocity, drift velocity and signal velocity. Good luck finding anything that's both authoritative and understandable. TLDR is that signal velocity in copper or silver cables is very fast and is measured by comparing it with the speed of light. Tell that to Audiophil. OK, my premise in this video is that there is such a thing as the skin effect. It's real and in audio we ought to consider it. That is clearly, absolutely without the sarcasm I'm often wrongly accused of, it's the right thing to do, so let's consider it some more. I can give you some figures courtesy of Belden, a company you may recognise as being a serious manufacturer of cables. To calculate or measure the skin effect, we need to consider a high frequency. 20 kHz is as high as we normally go in audio. So in a cable of a certain diameter, at 20 kHz, 68% of the diameter is used. 68%, not all of it. The diameter of this conductor, not the whole cable, just the conductor, just under 3 millimetres. That's quite a fat cable. And of course, a fat cable will already have a low resistance, presuming it's not crazy long. It won't matter if the high frequencies only use 68% of it. And I said that the skin effect is greater in thicker cables. If we go down to a diameter of 0.8 millimetres, which is practical for line or mic level audio, at 20 kHz and all lower frequencies, 100% of the conductor is used. Science, therefore, tells us that in audio, the skin effect is irrelevant. It wouldn't be irrelevant at higher frequencies than analog audio, which of course we find in video signals, digital audio, radio frequencies, etc. But it shouldn't be a thing in analog audio. OK. I have to allow for some subjectivity here because not everything in life is all cut and dried. We do see that there is such a thing as the skin effect and above a certain conductor diameter, it isn't zero. So could it be a factor in loudspeaker cables? The power amp to loudspeaker interface benefits from thicker cables. But could we be allowing the skin effect to creep in? Creep under our skin, if you like. The lower resistance impedance of the speakers will make any increased resistance in the cables more significant. I'd like to think that I've asked a few questions here and possibly touched on some of the answers. But what about you? Maybe you have a scientific frame of mind and you know for sure that the skin effect is irrelevant to audio. Or maybe you prefer the subjective approach and your mind tends to wonder and worry. Maybe even, maybe you've heard the skin effect with your own ears. Whichever, let us know in the comments. See you soon. Wait! <laughs> I haven't discussed stranded conductors, and I certainly haven't discussed lit wire. Tell us what you know in the comments. Hi, I'm Phil, Audio Phil. My interconnects are triple coaxial, titanium, then oxygen-free copper, then 99.9% .9 fine silver, insulated with pressurized nitrogen in a graphene sheath. Skin effects are isolated into a platinum back channel and sunk into ground through Vantablack nanotubes buried beneath my speakers.